Begin the current daf from the Sefer's Bay of Daf Zayin. We begin six lines down from the top of the Amud. We will continue on the related discussion from the previous daf regarding that of Mekech Toyis, and also as it relates to that of the eggs, what the purpose and utility of the eggs are, and then we go back to the Gemara's previous discussion, the previous daf. What was Rav's statement that he says, in Mitzias and the Gemara, when the egg comes out, then it's considered finished, what halachic relevancy was he saying that halach? I should have told you about the Kazakh and the Kazakh, 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 so we're going to discuss in today's daf are the halachic status of baby chicks born on Yom Tiv, which was what we mentioned in the previous daf, the shear of Se'or and Chomet, which goes back to halach of Amishnah, another machlik of Hisham Esil, regarding that of leavening, of yeast, and of Chomet, like a piece of bread. Some of the key terms the concept in today's daf are Eber Menachai, that's a limb from a living creature, which although it's forbidden, but it's not considered as an avela, which is unique halachas of tumah to that of an avela. Kisa adam is halacha that when you shecht a chaya and an oif, not a behem, then you have a halacha of covering the blood. Shrita and kisa adam is, like we said, regarding slaughtering the animal, you have to cover the blood. Mekech is a mistaken uh, a sale, which is void, or sometimes a, a difference of the price. Niblas oif tahar is unique halacha by a kosher bird that became an avela, Interesting, when you touch it or when you carry it, it does not contaminate a person. It's only when it's in his throat, the vase of then it actually contaminates him. Beer chametz is the halacha that when one has chametz, although it generally refers to the of Tashbisu, but in Agamar's context, it refers to Bali Rabba, Bali you're not supposed to have the chametz, you have to get rid of it. Malacha Shen Zikl is the halacha, it's actually Machlik is actually Taisis, but regarding when it's, you're doing malacha, not what it was meant to be in the, in the Mishkan, or possibly even what your intention right now is not for the malacha itself. So though it's actually performing a malacha, but that wouldn't be considered the, the malacha, the raisa of that malacha. So we continue. We're on daf, Zayin Amad Aleph, six line down at the top of the Amad. First, we're just finishing up a discussion we had on the previous daf, when we spoke about a mekech tois regarding someone who wanted a certain type of egg. So the Gemara brings out, who the amalahu? Someone who said to the people, Be'ed the dich who has a fertilized egg, meaning that was seminated by a, by a rooster, by a male, who has a, an egg that was laid by a hen from a rooster, meaning that it was not heated up from the ground to conceive without a male. That's called fertilized eggs. So Yavale bayed the Saf Me'ada. So they actually gave him an egg that was, that the, the hen, the, the, the lady chicken, had warmed up from the ground and was actually able to lay eggs but those eggs cannot have, cannot hatch chicks. That's what's called unfertilized. The word um, safna me'ara is that it conceives eggs when it just gets uh, heated from the ground, which the Gemara later on tells us that whenever there's a male, there's a rooster around, it's not gonna become um, unfertilized eggs. It's not gonna get it from the ground. Uh, it's not gonna conceive that way. It's only gonna be from the male. But the word safna is from the word like we find in the Bible, safune tumune chal, which means covered. Is when, it, when it covers itself with the earth, it could conceive on its own. So they gave him the wrong type of, type of egg, basically. He asked for a fertilized egg, and they gave him from unfertilized. So also came to the Rabbah, came from the Rabbah. We said to them, This is, that's it, this is a mistake acquisition. You gotta, it's all, the sale has to go back. So the Rabbah said, obviously. So the Rabbah said, no, that really, the guy who wanted the fertilized egg, he just wanted to eat. I didn't come to the so I think a fertilized egg from a male, I'm from the Shemin Tven. It's, it's, it's fattier, it's higher quality. The, 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 the insemination of the male gives a more, uh, who knows, some type of a mineral or something. So, and then Lamai Naf and then what would be the difference? Who cares? He still asked for fertilized, let's say it was for eating. Who cares? It's still, they didn't give him what he asked for. Because no, as we said before, the Mitzvah Baini Baini. He would say, well, we would give him the difference in price of the quality. But you're still giving him the product he's asking for. Kamash Malan is saying, no, that the person you generally wants fertilized, he wants it to be able to hatch the chicks, and that's not possible from unfertilized eggs. Like, no one ever bought eggs, generally, usually, in the store these days, and, and finds uh, a chick pop out, and you're making uh, scrambled eggs in the morning, unfertilized eggs, and, but he wants fertilized, he wants to have a chick, therefore that's the, uh, the chiddush of the halacha that's considered as a mekech toys. Now, going back to the, two, uh, the, the, the teaching of Rav, the previous daf, we had said, Beya in Yitziasa, when the egg comes out from the mother, Nikbur then is finished. So the Gemara brings two additional explanations what that means. We had said we had attempted some interpretations and we rejected them, and then we said it was regarding Mecca Chamemka, as it was we were just finishing that discussion regarding that, yeah, the guy wants it to be able to, 
you know, hatched chicks. And it's only possible if it came to a full, like you said before, DNA, you know, I mess with it, it only became to a full development. But then Gemara brings other interpretations. We might say, we want to say another interpretation. What does it mean when it comes out finished? It means, when the majority of the egg comes out, then it's considered finished, which the halachic application is regarding that of yomtiv, which is, if, let's say, the majority of the egg came out from before yomtiv, and then, let's say, went back into the womb, and then it ended up finally getting laid on the, on the yomtiv night, and it's going to be permitted, because it's as if it was nailed from the day before which is to come to teach with Rabbi Yechanan that says this right now. Rabbi Yechanan says, Let's say the egg. Most of it came out from before Yom Tov. Ah, Mazda. No, went back in. And then it comes out on Yom Tov. Put the lachum Yom Tov. You're allowed to eat on Yom Tov because it's considered Be'ish and Oldo. Me'ed of Yom Tov because the majority came out. That's one interpretation. Be'ed of Yom Those who say that actually the rabbi is coming to exclude from Rabbi Yechanan. And exactly the opposite. And my Mitzias and Nigmar was when it comes out finished, meaning Mitzias Kul and Nigmar. You meant only if the whole thing comes out finished. It's yes, cool it in. Only if older comes out, yes. Of the Ruba Levin, majority not. Well, the Fukim Rebbe Yechanan is coming to take some So again, it's either one or the other that is coming to say. Now, Gufa, the Gemara goes back to the Bryce we brought in the previous stuff. If you recall, we brought in parenthetical of Rav's teaching. We had attempted to say that what does Rav mean when he says, Imitsyas and Igmaga? So the first interpretation we said, oh, when is it an egg and not part of the chicken itself? When it comes out. Because when it's inside, it's, it's part of the chicken, and you can't have it with milk. You can only have eggs with milk when it comes out. So we brought a bryce that rejected that and said, what do you mean, Lasais? Look at the bryce. The bryce says even when the egg is inside the chicken, it's still considered power. So it can't be that that was the teaching of Rav. So now we go back to that. Gufa, the bryce has said, someone slaughters a chicken, a hen, and he finds finished eggs inside the mother. You're allowed to eat those eggs. You know, you found it in the chicken itself. You're cleaning out the chicken. Cleaning it out, taking out all the different parts, and you find, oh, there's eggs over here. You can eat those eggs with milk. And Yaakov, he says like this. He says he disagrees. He says, If those eggs were attached to the tendons, which are the ligaments of the mother, that's it. This is like part of the chicken itself. You can't have it with milk. Now the Gemara says, okay, based on that b'risa, so who's the following b'risa going like? The Bryce says like this. So if someone eats, there's a few parts over here. There's in general the halacha of the vela, which we know that a dead animal contaminates. But it's a unique halacha of a, a kosher bird. Oiftar. If someone eats from the dead carcass of a kosher bird, which contaminates the one who eats it, that not only does he become tummy, the garments he's wearing when he swallows it also becomes tummy. But interestingly, if he touches the dead chicken, or if he carries it, the Gemara tells him that it's neither, that's actually he's not going to become tummy. It's only when he's swallowing it in his throat. <coughs> so now the Bryce is coming to tell us, so you're telling me that the nevel of Oiftar, when you swallow it, it contaminates you. Now what's considered part of a nevelas Oiftar? So if someone eats one of the following things, which are, min shal beyim, from the cluster of the eggs, which is when it's attached to the spine, which is the ovaries. So if he's eating from the cluster of the eggs, it, obviously it's formed inside the chicken itself. So the, the word shal is like, uh, we find shal shal kaisim, when things are banded together. So if someone's eating these eggs, when they're still attached to the ovaries, to the chicken, or let's say minat summits, let's eat from the bones of the chicken, or let's say minat gidin, so he eats from the tendons, which Rashi points out this mandama obviously would be holding what's called in the gidim. And we have a, a Talmudic discussion throughout Shaz. Are the tendons, do they have a taste like the meat itself? Do we consider it as meat or not? This mandama obviously holds the tendons are not like the meat itself. It's like bones. Or another case. Let's say he eats a minabasa shenitlash minachai. He eats from the flesh of the bird, but the bird's actually not dead. It's actually detached from the living bird. So although that's usr, but it's actually not considered as an avail. It's not from a dead animal. So all these cases, if you're eating this, whatever this is, from all the cases we just said, the bones, the tendons, the, the busser that was detached from the living bird, or from the cluster of the eggs, tar, it's going down your throat, you're going to be tar. It's not considered nivlas oif tar. So what do you see from this? You see that the shalosh al 
these eggs that are in the ovaries is not considered as basr, because it is an available. But obviously, the, those eggs are not considered as basr, because if they were, then it should be a when it's going down the base of bleed. Continues the Bryce, that's the ratio of the Bryce. This is the Bryce, so a Sefer says that mina eshkol shall beim, but let's say it's from, and these words are seemingly arbitrary, but it's from the bunch of the eggs, which Rash explains, that means to say, he's actually eating from the flesh of the ovaries, of the spine, where the eggs are attached over there. The eshkol means it's like, it's like bunched in, it's like your mom is eating from the, from the actual ovaries itself of the mother chicken. Or let's say he eats mina kurkavin from the crop, or which is part of the, the intestines of the chicken, or b'nei ma'ayin, or he eats one of the intestines, let's say he, he dissolves the fat, so the morning he swallows it. So tummy is going to be tummy in these cases, because these are all considered part of the, the flesh of the chicken, which is nivla saif toh, which is matame in the throat. Oh, so that was the b'raisa. Says the gemara man tam, so who's the tam of this b'raisa that, what, says in the ratio, that if you eat min ha-sholo shal beitzim, you eat from the cluster of the egg, tahar, the person be tar, obviously this mandama holds, that the eggs that are attached in the mother are not considered as basr. Because it was obviously in the in the throat. And Rabbi Yisra says, it's the like Rabbi Yaakov. Obviously, that's not like Rabbi Yaakov. Because the Iker Rabbi Yaakov, Ha'amah, he said, Im ha'yum urois begidin. He says it was attached to the ligaments. And surois, it's forbidden. Because it's like the chicken flesh itself. This madam who's saying that it's going to be mut, meaning tahar, it's obviously not like not like not like a Yaakov. But Jamal Abai Abai disagrees. Says no, not true. Mimai, where do you get this from? Dilma ad kam to come a Where do we find your Yaakov over there? His halachic telling us that it's like meat. That was ele in isura. That was regarding the prohibition of basa b'chol, which is even though it's not meat, rabbinically it's forbidden because since it's very close to being like the flesh of the chicken you would make a gizera not to eat those eggs because of a confusion of basa b'chal of eating meat and milk mixed together. But in your tumma, why? Regarding tumma, we never said it's going to be considered as bustard to say that's going to be a tumma when it's in your throat. So it's not difficult. It could be like a biyakim. But if you're going to say, wait a second, what's the difference? Then you're tummy, an igzer. For tummy, you should also make the same gizera. Rabbinically, you should be tummy when you're swallowing it, just like you made a gizera regarding the prohibition of basa b'chal. And that'll tell you, no, afushi tumma. That would be increasing tum in the world, which the problem with that is that that causes losses for whenever you have taurus. And by fushi tum in the we never want to rabbinically increase tum if we don't have to. I Rashi says so many times in Shas we find gizeras in the laws of tum. He says Rashi, yes, we do when we have to, but we, we would never say such a svar. Oh, oh, and I mean, Nixer, we should also be gizeric. We don't want to increase tumas, and therefore it actually could be like Rabbi Yaakov. Because Rabbi Yaakov is only saying by the laws of Basim B'chal of Itzaz Rabbanu. Because it might be confused with the Basim. But Tumah, the cost of eggs, is not Basim and it could even be like Rabbi Yaakov. That's one version of the discussion of who this Bryce is like, taking the halachas of the ratio of the Bryce. Now says the Gemara, we're going to we're going to discuss the Seif of the Bryce. And we're going to try to ask who it is from the Seif. Because the Seif switches. The Seif says, Mina Eshkel Shabetzim. If you take from the bunch of the eggs, then Tumah is going to be Tumah. It sounds like the same thing, but. There's something called eshkol, and there's something called shalal. Shalal obviously is uh, lesser in its um, status of basr, and then we said it's going to be tar. And eshkol is obviously considered like from the ovaries itself, which is the chicken. The ovaries are what's, what's forming the, uh, the, the eggs inside of it. Oh, so if somebody eats from that um, bunch of the eggs, it's going to be tummy. Who's that like? And Rabbi says, oh, that's Rabbi Yaakov. So although in the Reisha, it sounded like not like Rabbi Yaakov, and then we were miyash of how it could be like Rabbi Yaakov, the Seifa seems to be like Rabbi Yaakov. Because the Amah, he says, and yeah, if the egg is attached to the, to the ligaments of the, of the chicken, it's going to be forbidden. Which is Rashi explains, when the Seifa talks about Eshkol, Rabbi Yosef, who's talking right now, he understands that means eggs that are like attached to the ligaments. Whereas Shalal of the Reisha, it's not like it's not so attached, not so, it's like those fully finished eggs that are very close to developing uh, the white shell on the outside, which are not really so much attached, it's only really held by a little bit. And therefore, that's what we're saying is like Rabbi Yaakov, who says it depends on if it's <coughs> Mu'uris Begidin or not. Safe, it's really Mu'uris. Okay, it's Aish. It's 
swallowing this of the nevela of the oiktar, it's going to be make you tummy. The Risha, even like Rabbi Yaakov, it's not really Mo'uris. It's a little bit, it's a very ten, tenuous connection if it's going to be tar. But seemingly, it's like, like Rabbi Yaakov, because the Tanakhama said, well, I don't care if it's Mo'uris it's still the power of it, it's still not like flesh. So seemingly, the Bryce uh, of the safe is like Rabbi Yaakov. So, Rabbi, here also, like in the first verse, Rabbi disagrees, he says, no. Mimai de Eshkol, who is to say that this is what you call the bunch of the eggs? Mahanach de Talib Eshkol, who said you're interpreting the Bryce correctly? Who said it means the eggs that are that are uh, hanging um, on the on the on the ligament on the spine. Dilma Eshkel Gufe, maybe it's the ovaries themselves, and therefore it'd be like everybody, because everyone agrees you're eating the ovaries itself, that's part of the chicken itself. It doesn't have to be like Gubiak, it'd be like Tanakama. And the may begin to say, wait a second, hello, Eshkel Gufe my member. If it's told about the, the the ovaries itself, but so what's the kid is saying that that's gonna make the person tell me, of course that's, that's the chicken itself. And that he says, no, it's no different than, than that you had to tell me about the crop and about the intestines. So I'm the bus, and although obviously that's the flesh of the chicken itself, but even they can't cheat a but since there are people who don't eat the crop and don't eat the intestines, it took less mean you have to tell me that it's going to be considered the bus or to make it tell me when it's in the throat. So I come here also by the eshkel itself, by that of the ovaries themselves, even they can't cheat there are many people who are not going to eat it. So it's a lashmin, you have to tell me that it's going to be considered as baser. And again, therefore, it's not necessarily like Rabbi Yaakov, but it can be not like Rabbi Yaakov. So again, that was the discussion. Who's this Bryce alike? First, we discussed the Reisha. Sounded not like Rabbi Yaakov. says, no, it could be like Rabbi Yaakov. Then we discussed the Seifa. It sounded like, yes, like Rabbi Yaakov. Mice says, no, could it be not like Rabbi Yaakov? Because even the Rabbana would agree, because it's not even Tomat, that which is hanging on to the, it's that which is the ovaries itself. Now, relating to this, this previous Gemara's discussion, Tanabon. So look at the Brisa that says, any creature that cohabits during the daytime, which means to say that's when they're intimate, so such a creature, the females give birth during the daytime. Any creature that only mates at nighttime, that gives birth at nighttime. Any creature that cohabits both by day and by nighttime, so then it gives birth both by day and by nighttime. So the Gemara explains one of these three categories. Whatever mates at daytime, gives birth at daytime. Zutanagalas refers to a chicken. The chicken mates only during the daytime, so only gives birth, only lays eggs during the daytime. That which mates at nighttime, gives birth at nighttime. Zutanagalas refers to the bat. The bat is only doing their thing at nighttime, so therefore it's going to also lay, it's also going to give birth at nighttime. Who is that creature that cohabits both the day and night? And that's Adam, that's mankind. And Rechel the Domele, all types of creatures that are similar to man. So the Gemara discusses this, this Bryce, Amama. You told me, that any creature that mates during the daytime gives birth at the daytime. You told me Zutan the Ghost is referring to the chicken. Why do you need a Bryce? Does it tell me such a, a fun fact? And you'll find on the Snapple cap, why do you need to know this? That it gives birth uh, by the daytime. I said, you might know, it's very important, Allah. Like the Modi Bereed of Khan. Because I'm gonna Modi Bereed of Khan, he says, let's say the following thing. Let's say, Badak Bikini Shatanagam Arab Yamtiv. Arab Yamtiv, you're doing the rounds, you're checking on your farm, you walk around, you check, and the wife needs some eggs quickly before Yamtiv, you're checking in the chicken coop. Bina Shmashis, Bale Masala Beya, sorry, I mean, there's no, I checked. This, I checked in the chicken coop, there's no eggs in there, I can't give it to you. Which obviously, if it's going to give birth, if you lay anything, it's going to be obviously at night. Because you checked by Ben Hashemash, it's twilight, there was no eggs. The problem is, interestingly, Lamacha Hishkin, the next one you get up, before Lysa Shacha, right before the, the roosters are, you're up, ready before the crack of dawn, and you're doing your rounds, guess what? Umotzebobeya, you look in chicken, I don't believe it. There's an egg inside the chicken coop. So Allah is muteris. It's actually going to be permitted to use this egg. Now, the reason why we said that you check before Yom Tov, his tongue is a chiddush. Even though you checked and you didn't find any eggs, and you know the wife is going to say, did you really check? Do I have to come and see that it's really, the, did, did you move the hay around? <laughs> did you take out the things in the fridge and check behind? See, this is, this is why I have to check, right? So he made sure he really checked. He didn't find any eggs. We, you can't say that it was late in the weekday because you checked by Benesh Mashes, there was no eggs over there. Even so, the halacha is that it's going to be permitted because we rely on the b'risa that said, whatever mates during the daytime gives birth during the daytime. So most definitely this egg was not laid. Now you know you're not going uh, uh, 
it's you know insane. You know it's not morning yet, and you see the egg over there. You know for sure it must have been laid not at this previous night. So therefore, the egg is going to be permitted. The promise is going to be permitted. I know, but but he checked. There was no egg over there. He says, you know, maybe the guy off, but maybe the wife is right. Maybe Taka didn't check well enough. He didn't find it. And the Philippa, the Gaffa, but then the Gemara says, I'll tell you, even if he did check well enough and the wife doesn't have anything on him, I'll tell you, you know what could be? Maybe the majority of the egg already came out from before Yom. Then it went back into the womb of the mother. And like Rabbi Yechanan, that although it's obviously not a common thing for that to happen, but since we're so confident in the law of the Brisa, that it cannot have laid the egg at night time, so we'll say that that's probably what had happened, and therefore it was already considered born, even though it only came out during the night time. He says, is that really so? But for Amr Yisim Ben Shalom he says, but the Bikinish Tanaka, he talks about the same case. He says, if you checked in the chicken coop, but may you didn't find the egg, or the Macha Hishki Matzabay, the next morning you get up before the crack of dawn, and you find the egg, that's going to be forbidden, but it's, 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 it was obviously later on Yom Tib, it's Beish and Older, it's going to be Asr. So it says, no, that's not difficult. Hasam bin Desafna Mi'ara. That case of, of uh, Rav was talking about where it was unfertilized. It, 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 it got it from, from covering itself in the earth. Such a chicken could actually lay the egg. It's only from the mating. When it mates, which is during the daytime, it, it lays the egg during the daytime. If it didn't mate, because the chicken could do it unfertilized too and lay eggs, then it could even give birth at night time. So I don't understand. Yeah, if that's the case, then you tell me there are chickens that lay eggs at night time, so did a marinami. Then the case of Marioso. How did he say it's going to be permitted if you checked every omphid and you didn't find the egg and you come with it before the crack is on, you find the egg, it's going to be permitted. What do you mean? Maybe so, so How do you know? Maybe that chick, that egg from that chicken, it, it, it was unfertilized and therefore it laid it at the night of God. There's a base and all this. How could he say it's mutter? Oh, it says the Gemara is talking about the Ika Zafra Bahadal. We're talking about where there was a rooster with that hen. And since there's a rooster with the hen, we say, okay, so it made it. If it made it, so then it's obviously it wasn't at nighttime. It must have been from before Yamta and never from Mimutu. So this is, well, how do you know that? But Ika Zafra even if there's a male, Imar Safna, maybe it, it, it was unfertilized, maybe it did it on its own. But I says, no, we have a tradition called Hechad Ika Zafra, whenever there's the male around, Let's have Mara. She's not going to do it on her own. She's not going to fertilize herself from the earth. And therefore, since there's the roost over there, we knew that it couldn't have been at nighttime because it only gives birth during the daytime. So, Sigma Bokibad Kama, how far, when you're saying there's a Zacha around, a Vivite, how far could it be that you're saying that it's, it's not doing it on its own? So, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, anywhere as we continue on the base, the Shom of Kali B. Mump. If the hen could hear the sound of the rooster during the daytime, as Rashi points out, that during the daytime you don't hear as far as, as nighttime. As so, as long as you can hear during the daytime, that's a zakhir is around and she's not going to do it on her own. And then the Allah is going to be that it's going to be mutter, that egg that you find before the crack of dawn. And actually, the Gemara brings that other Rabbi Mari Uvdi, Rabbi Mari actually, uh, actually did a ruling. He did that, he checked from before Yom Tov. He didn't find uh, any eggs. He got up before the crack of dawn the next day. And there was no male rooster around at Shitten Bati until 60 houses away. And Ramari relied on that Tarnagal, on that rooster, and he permitted the egg because obviously this chicken would not have done that on its own because even though it was 60 houses away, that's still considered close enough that there's a Zacher. And it, 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 it must have been from before Yomtev because it's not doing it on its own. It's only the Saf Ma'ada that then you would have to be concerned that maybe it did on its own. Now the Gemara qualifies a little bit more and says, but the Ikanara, let's say it could hear the Zacher, it could hear the, the rooster, but there's a river that's separating them. So then, Loyavra. Then, then the hen is not passing the river, and therefore you would say it's us to that egg, because obviously it's unfertilized, obviously it did it from the earth itself. Now, but the Ikanara, but if let's say there's a bridge over the river, then it would go over the, the bridge to get to its, its rooster, and then, then you would say it's Muslim. No, but, but going back, the Ikamitzra, but let's say it's not a regular bridge. You go these, these hikes in the Adirondacks or whatever, you have this a rope that's tied on to two poles. One is stuck into a peg on one side of the river, and one is stuck into a peg on the other side of the river, 
and you have a very narrow piece of wood that's along the width of the river, and you have to pass by with great difficulty by holding on to that, that rope, and you pass by, so then, mayavra. Then the chicken's not going to pass that by, and, and that would not qualify that it was going to be uh, fertilized by the male. But the Gemara actually brings Haba Ubda, actually, although we said halacha is like this, but there actually was a story of Abda Mitzvah. And actually, the chicken, the hen actually passed by on that narrow piece of wood to get to its rooster to actually uh, mate. But the Gemara says, wait a second. But my Akimta, how do you explain your Yisabir Bshal? He was the one that says that if you check before Yomtiv and you didn't find an egg and you wake up before the break of dawn and you're doing your regular rounds and you find an egg before Allah Sashacha, he says, okay, so obviously it's awesome. You check before Yomtiv wasn't there. Obviously it was during the nighttime. How do you explain it? But the Safnim Ad, you told me that if it was a non fertilized egg, then it could be late at night. Time. Okay, it's a Bishnah to me, Asr. But says the then my ear, you bought that. If that's the case, if that's how you explain the Rabbi Yisrael Shal, he had said, you checked from before you umped, and you didn't find it, and you wake up before the crack of doing to me up. Why do you have to say if you checked? Hila what do you mean? You should say it's us even if you didn't check. You have to be chaysh, it's beish and all the way up to. So you want to know, if you didn't check before you umped, mamish, but beinash mashal. Hey, you could say, you could say that uh, it was from yesterday. Because Rashi explains, lamais, lamais, at the end of the day, most of the eggs are laid during the daytime. And therefore, if you didn't check, Right before Yom Tiv, we would say that it was from the Yom Tiv, and we would say that it's going to be, meaning from, from the daytime, and we would be mutter. It's only been checked it right before, and it wasn't there. And Dr. Shvart, it must have been during the night. But the Gemara says, wait a second, if that's the case, then Kibabik Nami, then even if you checked right before Yom Tiv, if you say most eggs lamaisa during the daytime, even when it's unfertilized, so then why don't you say that, even though it wasn't here, I checked, trust me, I checked everywhere, I picked up all of it, it wasn't here. No magic. But maybe you'll say that most of it came out from before Yom It went back into the womb. Okay, the Bechon on the Greek says that considered bear, that was not from before Yom Tim, and it's a If you tell me, anyways, it's arrived, so it's either one or the other, they're both flawed. Either that it, it was just a Ruba Bechazer, which you're right, it's not so Shriach, but there's also not so Shriach that it was late at night time. You say it could have a Mahaspin, but why picking that better than that one? Says the Gemara, no, because the Bechon is Shriach, no. The Bechon in this case is really not common. So therefore, as Rashi explains, when there is a male, then we know for sure it cannot be a night time. Okay, then we'll have to say, like Rabbi Yechonen, that Yatsa Ruba Bechazer. But when it's uh, no male around, where it could uh, fertilize on its own, meaning unfertilized, if it could lay egg on its own, so then laying it at night time is still more common than Yatsa Ruba Bechazer. And therefore, we're going to assume that it was at night time, and not that it went out before and it came back, and therefore that's what came on Yom Tiv, and therefore it's going to be a Beish and Yom Tiv, and therefore it's going to be Asim. Now, parenthetically, another teaching from the same Bama, Rabbi Yisim and Sholem Arav, who we quoted before, we see another unrelated, seemingly unrelated teaching. Haitu Mashrika. Ground garlic is secantly a danger when it's uncovered, because the snake drinks from it, and if he finds it uncovered, he's going to put his poison inside that, and therefore one should not partake of that ground garlic that was left outside. Our Mishnah, going back to Allah of our Mishnah, so this finishes up until here, we spoke about this first Allah of our Mesechta, Beish no b'yom t'be'er machlik z'becham b'sil, if te'ochel, or in te'ochel b'sham said you could eat it, b'sil said you cannot eat it. Now we continue to the next Allah, which we said that the reason why we're saying it over here, although it's unrelated to the discussion we're having, but since it's three machlik z'becham b'sil, that b'sil is machmer, b'sham is mekel, so we say it together. So what was the second halacha? It was Bishamim, they said, Sa'ur Bikazayis. Bishamim said that yeast, the leavening, which leavening makes other things chametz, it's what you put in to make the dough rise. So that's very stringent, very severe. That's going to be a problem even the size of an aleph. Chametz Bishamim says only because he said it was like the size of a date, which is larger. It's not a problem in the size of an aleph. Bishol said, no, both of them are going to be a problem the size of a gizayis. So the Gemara discussed their opinions. My time, what's the reason Bishamai? That he differentiates between Sa'ar and chametz. He makes like a chiluk. He says, Sa'ar is Kedayas. And chametz, the only problem is it's a larger size than of a date. Says the, says the Gemara, I'll tell you what's the reason of Bishamai. Because in Cain, if we think that both Sa'ar and chametz have the same shear, so let's the Rechman of chametz. The Torah should have written just the lesser, the less severe one of chametz. Well, the Gemara said, you don't have to have a special pasta regarding Sa'ar. But I mean, I would say, Pashit. Uma chametz, if regarding regular chametz. She'en chametz, which not such a severe type of leavening. Because ice is still the very stringent share of the size of an olive. 
So Tzor, Shechem Witzer Kasha, so leavening itself, which is a very severe type of chametz, which inflates things. That's the whole problem. That was an unu with the matzah and this, this the other unu blues and that's like a balgaiva like that. And this is this makes other things like that, like causing the old most of the shul to have the shir of a gazay. So the tzor because I found the lama he says why is the tzor right? A special pasuk going tzor. Ah, let me come to tell you the shir is shozel like shir is shozel. I was going to tell you that the measurements are not the same. That that's why you don't learn out tzor from chametz because chametz is the shir of a kisevus of a date. So that if it only said that of chametz. We would say, hey, even though Sa'ar is more severe, but you would say, die alone and then lose can even. You can't be more severe than when you're learning out from. And then you would say, Sa'ar is also the size of a date. That's why you have to write explicitly that of a Sa'ar to say that it has a smaller shear and that of Hametz has the bigger shear. So Rashi explains, so, but where did he get this idea of a kisevis, of a date? Like, we know kisayis is always the shear that we have regarding machal masurim. Where did he get this idea of a date? So Rashi says, either because that calms a person down, as we find it regarding the laws of Yom Kippur and Yuma Divine Tesser and Al. Or Rashi says, no, you're right, Shirin Zalach HaMesh Mishin, it wasn't that he made it up. This was a Talach of Melosh, had a tradition in Mizrabeim that it was the Shir of a Kisavitz. Okay, but that's a Bishan. What's a Basil? Why do they say that um, both are Kazais, but then why do you need Sa'ar? So, so it says they saw, I'll tell you why, Tzrichi, you need to say both. Because you wouldn't know one from the other. Because if Rahman Sa'ar had to only written Sa'ar, how do you mean I would have said, oh yeah, I'll tell you why it's also. Because it's a very severe type of leavening. If the is not so severe, the is not so severe, the would say, no, maybe it wouldn't be chai for chametz. So you have to say that the Isra is also with, regarding regular chametz. Now because the Rechman chametz, but if the Torah had written chametz, and it's edible, it's a piece, it's a bagel, it's a cheerio, whatever it is now. Of a Sa'ar Shem Rolachila, you take out that bag of yeast from the fr- freezer when you're making the thing, no, you can't, it's not edible. And Malai would actually tell you that there's no liability of chametz. So Tzrich had to tell you both, but really the shear of both of them is going to be, be the size of a kezai. But the problem with this interpretation the Gemara has is that Ubishami less learned the Rebzeira. Doesn't Bishami hold the Rebzeira that learns out from a Pasuk explicitly like Beishil, not like Bishami? Because Dama Rebzeira Rebzeira says, like, he makes the following dig. Pasuk HaKasa B'Sa'ar, the Pasuk in Shemayi Sud Beis opens up talking about the word Sa'ar. It says, You should not find in your homes any Sa'ar, any leavening. And the same Pasik ends off talking about Chametz. And says, Why? Kikal Eichel Machmetz, whoever eats Chametz. What do you mean? You should have written Kikal Eichel Sa'ar. Because you're coming to put the punishment with the Einish, with the Azar, with the warning. This Pasik is saying what not to do. And if you do, you get the punishment. You always have to have an Einish Azar. Why are you switching the word? And why are you going from Sa'ar to Machmetz? Ah, so the Zayel Lemuch to tell you, Zayel Sa'ar, Zayel Chametz. Sa'ar and Chametz is the same thing. Which means to say, just like this is a Gazayis, so that this is a Gazayis. So, how did Bishami say that, no, that Sa'ir is a Kazayas and Hametz is a Kaysevis? So, the Gemara actually changes the understanding of everything we had up until now. You're right, Le'inin Achila, regarding eating, Kulam no one's disagreeing. Meaning, as Rashi explains, even Bishami agrees that for Hametz, you would be chayed for Kazayas. Just like you're chayed for eating Sa'ir, which was like a Bizer, because Sa'ir and Hametz are the same thing. That was talking about Kikol Eichel Machmatzeh. That's where Reb Zir pointed out for Achila it's the same. Keep legal in a beer. Machlik B'Sham Asil is regarding getting rid of the Chametz, which is what we call Bayiro Bayamatze. B'Sham Asil, B'Sham Asil, Lo Yerfin Beer Machil. We don't know about the laws of getting rid of the Chametz and the laws of eating Chametz. Mimi, from the fact that the, the Pasuk had to tell me both Lo Yerua Lecho Chametz and Lo Yerua Lecho Sa'ar, why do you have to say both of Bayiro? Which is obviously we don't learn how to say just like by Achila, the eating of chametz is the same as shir of sa'ar, so to fabir it's going to be the same. No, because why do you have to say bayra and bayra on both sa'ar and chametz? Obviously, tell you that there's a discrepancy between the two of them, that one is the shir of a kezai, so one is the shir of a kezai. Whereas if it's a little so no, yafin and bayra we learn that the laws of getting rid of and the laws of achila, just like ba'achila, they're both kezaisim, so too regarding beer, a bayra, it's also going to be the shir of a kezai. And therefore, that means our machlek is in the Mishnah. Of the Shuma specifically regarding not of eating comments, but regarding that of the Isra of Balira. It might not be so we learned as we explained. I'm gonna be used with the this is Mahlik is all Mahlik is what in the beer. Gonna get rid of the Khamats. Regarding eating it, they're back called everyone agrees that it's a big eyes, both Sa'ar and even Khamats, even Bishem would agree is a Shiva Gizai. And Tana is similar in the Brysa that the Mahlik is regarding beer and not regarding eating. Because the Brysa says, the Pasik says in Shemais, the Lay Rolukh and the Gir says Khamits, you should not see by you in your possession Khamits. And the literal cause Sa'ar basically says Chametz and Sa'ar. 
Says the Bryce is the Machlaik is between Bisham and Sil. This is the Machlaik is regarding Bal Yira is between Bisham and Sil. Shbisham and the Bisham is say so are because I is the Hamas Bikisev. Yeast leavening is the Shir because I is the Hamas Bikisev. The Sil may say no, Zemis Bikisai is both a Kisai, but again, both of them agree by Achila that the Shir is going to be that of a Kisai. Now, the third halacha we had on Machlaik is Bisham and Sil regarding the laws of Yom Tif was a Sheikh is Chayba Ayb Yom Tif Bahul. Someone slaughters specifically a wild animal or a bird because. Both are chayv and kisadam in contrast to an animal. So what happens if you slaughter it on Yom Tov? So what about flakes? Beishami said the following words: Yachbar bedeker, you dig with a shovel, bichasa, and then you get the earth and you go cover the blood with the mizik kisadam. So said no, lo yishchid you cannot slaughter. And we can hold you like offer mukhem mebayyan unless if you had earth prepared from before uh, Yom Tov, which you have it ready to go ahead and, and cover it. If you didn't have ready, then you can shach the animal on Yom Tov. So the problem is the Gemara makes the following deep. The wording of the case that Bisham Misil discussed said Hashaykhit, the one who slaughters, which the, that wording sounds like the Evid in. Only sounds like after the fact. If you shafted, Hashaykhit, if you slaughtered, Vashtit Miyat, Bisham says, okay, no problem. Dig with, with your shovel and get the earth. So then, no, you can't check. But it sounds like they get feel alive. But initially, Bishamu would not allow you to go ahead and slaughter unless you talk to have earth prepared from before Yom Tif. Problem is, aim a seifa. Look at the seifa. The Mishnah continued and said, that was Bishamu's word. Now Basil says, oh, Basil, lo No, you cannot shech. Those are Basil's words. Unless you have earth prepared. Wait a second. Machal the inference is the Tanakama, meaning Bishamu, the first opinion, obviously saw or Yishchit. Obviously saying that you let us slaughter. But I thought you told me Hashaykhit. The words of Bisham Yisrael have contradictory inferences. Bisham's words sound like that Hashaykhit, he's coming, to, that if he did slaughter, that sounds like only by the Yavid can you go ahead and yach for Bidak Vichasim. But Bisham's words sound like, no, lo yishchit. I mean, lo yishchit. I also agree, lo yishchit. What's the still lo yishchit? You mean, I mean, it sounds like I'm saying that you could shech. It sounds like Bisham, you could even like a killer shech. So, so, so what's the opinion of Bishamai? So think about Holy Cow, it's not difficult. When Bishil said, Lo Yishchit, it really was going on the covering of the blood, which Bishami held that would be like a tchila, the covering, the, the, the digging with your shovel and, and getting the earth. And this is what Bishil was saying. When they said Lo Yishchit, they meant to say, don't do the conclusion of the Maiser Shechita, which is really referring to the Kisa Adam, the covering of the blood, but you're right, according to everyone, the shechita would be the yet. Even Mishan would agree that you really should have earth. It's really hashek, if you did. But, Beis Hill was saying that lo yishchit bi He was saying that, when he said lo yishchit, it's not really going on the shechita. It's really going on the next words. When he says lo yishchit, he would even say, don't shech and cover. Don't finish the shechita. Meaning, with the covering of the blood. So if Mishan, no. If you did shech, you will finish. You will dig to get the earth to cover the the blood. So again, the words of Basil are saying we don't mean really don't shech, I mean don't do what comes after the shechita, which is really the coming of the blood. But the problem is, aim a seifa. So the Gemara, let's go one step further. The, 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 the Mishnah continues and says, and they agree, Shem shachat, that okay, if you did shech, meaning that's the Yavid, after the fact, everyone agrees, that okay, dig with your shovel and cover the blood. So I don't understand. Mechlal Dereisha, that infers that the beginning part of the Mishnah, meaning Bishamai, who is talking about that the slaughtering obviously is Lav Diyavidu. Obviously not Bidiyavid, because I thought you telling me everyone even Basil agrees, Bidiyavid, if you shafted, you come with blood. So obviously Bishamai was disagreeing, saying, even like a Tchil going shafted, so I'm getting confused over here. Hashraichit Mind Bidiyavid. So then you resolve the Basil's words, okay, you were able to get around Basil's words, but, but look a little further. You tell me that. But the Yavid agrees you could. So obviously, Bisham is not talking about the Yavid after you shaft it. Some of the Rabbi says you're right. Hachikama. This is what the Mishnah is saying. Although you're right in general, the word Hashaychit sounds like, okay, the one who slaughtered, which sounds like after the fact. Here, obviously, it has to mean like a because you proved it from the end of the Mishnah that even Bisham agrees with the Yavid. So Bisham must be saying like a So now you have to translate like this Hashaychit Shibali Mole, the one who's slaughtering is coming to ask us. What should he do? Should he slaughter or not? Because he doesn't really have prepared earth. How do you tell him? 
So again, usually it implies with the Evid, but here it's not, that's not how you should read it. Hashaykh, the one who's slaughtering, that he's coming to ask us, initially, how do you tell him? I'm say, I'm you tell him, okay, shachet, slaughter it, chafar, go ahead and dig up earth, the kisa, and cover the blood. The slum, the slum said, no, lo yishchit, you're not allowed to slaughter, and can hoyle often multum levayan, unless that earth appeared from when it was still data. So, it's not a contradiction. Yeah, b'sham hold, you can even do it like a tefillah. Now, Rabbi Yisif Amr, which as Rashi explains, the Gemara is going to explain, well, how is, what is Rabbi Yisif saying differently than Rabba, according to b'sham, eh? Rabbi Yisif says, very similar wording. He says, Hafikama, this is what the, the Mishnah is saying. Hashaykh chiboli molech, if the one who's slaughtering is coming to ask us, Ketzeramalei, what do we tell him? The Shaman, they say, Oymerloi, they tell him, let's see if you can figure out what's different over here, Leich chafar, go dig up the earth, shachet slaughter, the kisa, and cover the blood. This is like in the back of those uh, highlights. You have to look at these pictures. What's different about these pictures? Sounds like you're saying the same thing. No, but the, the glasses here is on the left side, not the right side. Here he's saying first dig the earth, then shech, and then cover the blood. But everything else is the same. The Salaam they still say, no, you can't shech. Then we can have alpha mukum the bayam unless you had earth prepared from before the data. But one thing is there the, the Rabbi and Rabbi are saying differently about the order of digging up the earth or shechting. So I'm like it says Rabbi said Rabbi Yisra. It says, ah, okay. Let's say that you, the master of Yisra and Rabba, you're disagreeing in the halacha of Rabbi Zayr, which is, Rabbi Zayr Rabbi says, Hashaykhid, that the Akhali's halacha and the laws of Kisadam, that the one who slaughters, he has to put earth on the bottom of the blood and on top of the blood. Shomak says, a plastic in it says, you're going to spill out the blood of the, the wild animal that you're slaughtering, or the bird, and you're going to cover it in the earth. Now, in the earth sounds like it's absorbed and hidden in the earth before you even cover it. So upper lay it doesn't say cover it with earth, which that would sound like you only just want to cover it. And the bit of it's in the earth. This teaches us that you have to put earth on the bottom and earth on the top. That's what Zer is alam. So it says Abai Alam, then he says, okay, I'll tell you, this is your machlaikis with Rabba. The Mar is laid Rebzeira. You, the master of Yisab, you hold like Rebzeira, which is you first have to dig up the earth. So you have earth on the bottom. Then you shecht and the blood's going to go on the earth. Rabbi doesn't hold like Rebzeira. So go ahead, shecht first, and then dig up the earth afterwards. So Malay, the Rebbe Yisab says, no, 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 Abai. Both of us hold of the Allah of Zer. And you need to have earth on the bottom. So what's the machlegis? Why are you switching the order, the two of you? He says, I'll tell you why. What we're disagreeing about is on the following idea. Rabbi Saba, Rabbi held that if we could tell him to slaughter right away, that that's only if he already has earth on the bottom, then, then yes, then we permit it for him. But Eloi, but if let's say, we still need to tell him to dig first, why would we need to tell him to dig first? Because we need the earth on the bottom? Then Loi, then we don't permit it for him. In other words, the reason why Rabbi said his order was, Shef, then dig up the earth and then cover it, is because it has to be that we're not telling him to dig first. Because if we were telling him to dig for us, that means we don't have the earth on the bottom. So that we wouldn't allow. Why not? Why can't you tell him to dig up the earth so we have the halakha of Rebzeir to have the earth on the bottom? With Hashin, we're concerned. Dilma, maybe after he dug up the earth, he's like, you know, Mimlach, he changes my Malay Shachat. You know, I'm done with this. No one's helping me, whatever. I'm not, I'm not Shachat anymore. Comes out, he dug up the earth for nothing. You know, I'll do that on Yomzi. So therefore, Rabbi said, it has to be that you're telling him to Shachat and then dig up. If you're telling him to dig up, then Shachat. That means he doesn't have the earth in the bottom. If he's doing that first, he might change his mind. It's not going to shift at the end. Whereas Ula Didi, to me, whether the gear says other to the contrary or not, but he says, no, ha difa. It's actually better that what? That we don't make this gizer. I mean, he's having a gizer. He's concerned about this. He says, no, I wouldn't make such a gizer. I'll tell you why. Ki delay sharsley, if you don't let him dig up the earth first, and that meaning, and don't have this concern that he might stop before he shifts, if you don't let him dig up the earth, they might hold him back from 
And therefore, I hold that you could let him dig up the earth first because we have to do it like that for the Allah of his era. And then, he'll shaf. And we're not concerned with this, uh, that he might stop because we don't want to ever make such halacha because if a guy doesn't have earth prepared, then he's not going to be able to have simple Now, the Mishnah said, Umayyim, that everyone agrees that Shem Shachat, that if he did slaughter already, even Mishnah would agree, Shayaf, Bebedek, Bichas. Okay, then you can dig in with the Shabbat and you can cut it. Now, explaining this, Allah, Amr, Zekah, Amr, Abihud, he says, this that we're saying you're allowed to dig it up is only if the shovel is already stuck into the ground from before Yom Tiv. So it's not a problem about Chayvish. You're not digging anything. It's already in. You just have to take it out. So it's Gemara Bos Ha'is. Okay, so you took care of Chayvish. But you're doing the Malacha of crushing, <clears throat> which Rashi explains the question is on Rabbi Huda that he said, as long as you have the shovel stuck in, so obviously... Because if you didn't tell me the shovel was stuck in, so it's okay, good, you could do maluchas because of oichel nefesh. But no, from the fact that you tell me you had to have the shovel stuck in, obviously the reason the mission is not because the assay of covering the earth is doing the lace of doing malacha. Because if it were, then you don't have to have it stuck in from before. Rather, you tell me because it's like already chafer. It's already, you already did the plowing already. You're not doing anything now on Yantif. Oh, see, obviously you can turn to malacha. Obviously it's not a say the lace, I said. And I'll do malachas. And also, it's not muktza, the earth, because of that, because you already have the shovel stuck in. But that's the most question. Oh, if you're getting busy with malachas, so then you have the problem about, about that you're crushing it, because you still have the clumps that are attached, and it's not fit to cover the blood unless it's uh, ground down. Problem is, crushing is a tailad, the derivative of teichen, of grinding, which is a malacha. So, how does that help you that the shovel stuck in? Stop other malachas. It says, Amr of Chia, Barashi, Madav, is between the top of and Alos. We're talking, about, we're talking about where the earth is loose. So loose, loose earth is not going to be a problem about because you're not going to have to grind it. I said, but you're making a pit. When you're taking out the earth, although you're not chayrish because already it was taken out, but it should be like binyan or like building because you're making a, a pit. Someone digs a pit on Shabbat and he only needs the earth Paterla is going to be exempt, like Rashi explains, like the Gemara says in the first part of Chagiga, that since you only need the earth and you don't need the pit, that's not Baina, that's not Chayrish, it's Makalkal. And all types of Makalkal are going to be Pater, or as others explain, maybe because of Malachat Shem Zivlagubi, you don't need it for that thing itself, which, so I, I, it's Pater, but it's Asr. So it's explained, yes, but because of some Chazamtiv, you even initially allowed them to go ahead and take that out so they could cover the blood, so they could go ahead and do the Shechita of this animal. So then the question is, so why do you need the shovel stuck in? Oh, but still, we need it to, it should be prepared for me for Yom Tif, should be prepared for Muktza, and therefore that's what Rabbi Yudai said, that according to everyone in that case, it's going to be permitted if you really did the Shkita. Thank you. Anytime,